speak to you. It's October and it's uh, Black History Month in the UK and we are YouTubers, we are black content creators. <laughs> and um, it's nice to sit down and have a catch up and just, you know, 100%. talk about our experience as YouTubers and, you know, our influence in the space. I want to learn a lot from you. So my first question is, how did you get into what you're doing now? So it all started from when I lived in Birmingham. I was about 15 or 16. Um, I had a best friend that was a makeup artist and into makeup. And because I had um, a lot of hyperpigmentation and ingrown hairs that used to cause like dark marks, um, my friend taught me to um, mask the first makeup counter I ever went to. And um, I remember just putting on the makeup and being like, oh my God, my marks are covered. And it kind of gave me like, a boost of confidence. So I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And then when I was 19, I moved to um, London for uni. And then while I was in London, I was like, wow, everyone's so yeah. free here. Everyone's just, they're just so real. And everyone's just kind of like expressing their own way through makeup or through clothes. And I just thought it was so cool. So then um, after I finished uni, I kind of um, started working at Mac and then my love for makeup kind of grew. And so while I was in uni, my horse, I actually started my YouTube channel there because I felt like um, at the time on, on the space, there wasn't any any black male beauty kind of content creator, especially anyone speaking about deeper skin tone. So I did that for that reason. And then it kind of blossomed from there, really. Just remembering how I started on YouTube as well, being a makeup artist and just running to Mac. And even anyone who works at Mac, it was like, you are the god of makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. It's crazy how um, that kind of um, connects back to like YouTube, just uh, such an iconic brand. It's yeah. crazy. I feel like because um, deeper skin tones, there's so many shades that re which reflect even people used to review on YouTube and stuff. So, so, so amazing. Courtney, I know you, Courtney, because you have, apart from the fact that you are a Cambridge, it's Cambridge University, isn't it? Yeah. Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> you're also a business owner and a YouTuber. She's got so much on her resume. <laughs> She has an amazing wig line and I'm actually wearing her wig today um, and I've been rocking it for a couple of weeks. I feel like I'm about to do a review. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so nice to catch up with you and just have a chat about, you know, your influence on the YouTube black space and a little bit about mine as well. So my first question yeah. is, how did you get into what you're doing today? That is a very, very good question. Um, I feel as though my whole life, interestingly, has been leading up to this. Um, so I started doing hair when I was 13, just out of my auntie being like, you know, I'm not going to do your hair anymore. Like all these funky styles that you keep coming to me with, you're a child. I'm just going to do like four braids on your head. You got to go. But I was watching YouTube at the time and I was seeing all the, you know, quick weaves and all these different colours. And I just wanted to have those styles on my head and I was 13 I didn't have any money <laughs> I was like getting 15 pounds a week allowance and I put like as much money as I could went to the um hair shop or beauty supply store and bought like random packets of hair and just started doing my hair in my bathroom wow I think you got an, an amazing story actually I'm not a hair person so I really do appreciate um wig makers like yourself because i mean it's so <laughs> needed because i'm not i'm not into hair at all but it is important for black girls to kind of understand like what to do and i think youtube is one of those platforms that we've learned so yeah. much whether it is how to use the curling wand and the bendy rollers and you know how yeah. to flip your bangs it's been a platform where you've been able to learn from, especially from the YouTube black space. Um, so, Definitely. yeah, you've contributed to that, and that's amazing. But what's also inspiring about you is how you've also brought on, you know, so much wisdom. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Emma. I know, like, you've written a very inspiring book, and I just wanted to hear, like, um, how did you get into what you're doing today? What even inspired you to, you know, create the book? Because I think it's something that a lot of black women can actually learn from. So, yeah, the inspiration from the book came from 
a, a, a couple of different places. It came from my own relationship with my hair, research that I had done for my PhD around hair and identity, and then the teaching that I do at SOAS, where I teach African studies, because in the book I draw a lot on um, African cultures, specifically West African West African cultures, and most specifically Yoruba, but I also look at uh, Ghana and Sierra Leone and different parts of West Africa, mm -hmm. and um, what hair... Um, the significance of hair in in those cultures. Awesome. Um, I'm from West Africa as well. So um, <laughs> obviously my hair is obviously very important to me. I do I do love a weave. <laughs> I do love a wig. Um, but my hair is natural. And I celebrate my hair a lot. Um, I've had, like, especially throughout the whole quarantine period, I had my hair natural, like, in its afro. And, you know, um, for example, on YouTube, there's so many, like, tutorials and natural hair movement that we've been able to, you know, pick up and learn um, from, you know, women. But your book explains a lot. So that's really exciting to know um, how you've been able to educate black women on our hair and the importance of it and, and loving it and just, you know, taking it as something prideful. So who was it that really nurtured your talent and kind of pushed you into the right direction? Was there anyone that inspired you? Mm -hmm. So um, my friend from Birmingham, he really kind of helped me because he he was a makeup artist first before me and he kind of like nurtured me and kind of like told me about colour correcting and told me about concealers and stuff. But as I moved to London, I felt like I didn't have that kind of mentor around me just because there wasn't really anyone around the space because as well I didn't really know anyone. So I kind of felt like I had to be my own mentor and kind of be my own kind of yeah. like boost of confidence, which was really hard. But that's why um, I love what I'm doing now because when young boys kind of message me on YouTube um, or even in the comments, I feel like I can help people and give them the advice that I wish I had a few years ago. That's actually really good actually, that you can be a mentor mm -hmm. to people who are up and coming. So, Courtney, who is it that nurtured your um, talent or pushed you, like, in the right direction? So, I think it's really interesting because with YouTube, you have the ability to be mentored, taught, and just have this closeness to people you're probably never going to meet. And watching YouTubers and their tutorials, even, like, yourself, Chanel, like, I remember watching you when you were Amma Toffee and then Chanel Boating, and I remember, <laughs> you know, running to, but running back from school and watching Model Mondays and thinking, oh, what's Chanel doing? What's, you know, Jenny doing? What's Patricia doing? What's Shirley doing? And you just, you watch people and you feel so inspired to just copy what it is that they're doing because you might not have seen that in your real life. And so the thing about YouTube and particularly the YouTube black space, it's having everybody's talents almost nurture you and having um, exposure to other people and what they do and wanting to follow in that path and in that direction. And that is, I think, one of the biggest contributors to what it is I do now, working in the beauty space, but also just being a young black woman, growing up. Um, but I would definitely say other influences, such as my mum. My mum was, while she is still getting her head around the whole, you know, having a really great academic degree, but having a beauty company, <laughs> she's definitely really <laughs> motivating in the sense of, you know, whatever you do, if God's with you, you'll succeed and you've got to follow whatever path you're, you're destined for. So she definitely pushes me on that. So my mum is a huge source of inspiration. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say I'm one of those kids that was hugely raised by the internet. <laughs> There's so many other creators that I find so inspiring and that's really contributed to like how I've built my whole space as well. Um, even kind of even newer creators, like it's, it's interesting to see how trends change and how people, you know, you know, adapt it to the current times. So, yeah. Who was it that really nurtured your, your talent and pushed you in to the direction that you're down, you're going down now? I think it might actually be, mm. it might be books. Um, I, I read a lot as a, as a child. So for me, in many ways, like reading was my, was my refuge. And it was where I could kind of like, through characters and books, I could kind of have that community that I didn't have 
in real life in the way that like you know the internet kind of operates now or like social media operates now you can connect you can kind of create communities and connect with people even if they're not in your immediate environment when I was a child that's kind of what books did for me so I think it was my my love of reading really in many ways that kind of put me on the path to where I am today I feel like as you go older, that boost of confidence kind of happened to you. So I feel like people always think, oh my God, you're born with confidence, but that isn't the case. You, as you get older, like in the 20s to 25, I felt like I got that boost of confidence. And as I moved to London, I was around different people, different um, places, different events. And I kind of forced myself to make new friends, new people. And just even when I started my YouTube channel, it was such like um, just a confidence boost for me because I, I would never, ever, when I was like 19, think I was going to sit in front of my computer, be on YouTube, and record me being like, hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, how you doing? <laughs> like, it's just like, it was just so mind-blowing for me. <laughs> so um, for me to do that, it was just the, the start of confidence. So I think even with YouTube, as you do more and more videos, you kind of get used to talking to yourself on camera and seeing yourself That's and hearing true. your voice. And when you're in, in real when you're in real life at events, you'd be like, hey guys, you, like you really kind of like boost, like build your confidence by talking to yourself. And then when you're in an event space and you meet someone new, you kind of like get used to like talking to someone, you know? So I kind of, I feel like it kind of came from there. As I got older, boost of confidence kind of happened to me just by, you know, being on YouTube and different kind of events that happened in my life. I think all that YouTube helped me build my confidence, being on the camera and talking. Even the way I talk now, mm -hmm. I feel that I'm able to, you know, express myself yeah. a bit better than, you know, mm -hmm. before YouTube, you know, kind of used to get my yeah, totally words muddled up, muddled up and stuff like that, like now. <laughs> but yeah, um, in terms of just plus size body positivity, loving my melanin skin, it's really boosted Here my confidence. Is. And um, And we're here to help other mm -hmm. people boost their confidence as well. I feel that's an important role us YouTubers do play on a platform. Of course, definitely. Because when people always ask me, oh my God, like I really want to start a YouTube channel. Like, do, do, um, what, what do yeah. I do? I'm like, just start it. Like, I feel like people always like, oh no, but I haven't just got this, stop. I haven't got that. I'm like, babe, oh, start, open up your phone, open up your laptop, just start. Like, I think once you start it, you'll just build that confidence. Like, it's all about just getting it from the get go because the more you prolong it, the more it just won't happen. I'll definitely say that it's only been this year that I've really started to own it and really come into a good level of self-confidence and feeling as though I'm I'm starting to know what it is that I want to be about and, and how to do this. Um, because it's, it's always so hard trying to strike the balance of what do I love to do? What am I good at doing? And do I even think that I deserve to be in this space? You know, there's been a lot of imposter syndrome um, within the YouTube space and I experienced it in academic spaces but I think I'm starting to come into that place of you know well somehow you found yourself here just just be here and enjoy it and and do well and try to stay here you know and that's that's yeah. where I'm, I'm I'm still evolving for sure. I do a lot of public speaking I do a lot of live broadcasting and that is definitely something that when I started doing, I would have felt extremely nervous doing, you know, it's not something that I naturally yeah. just had had this confidence, but I feel like I had things that I wanted to say and I felt like it was important to say them. So I was just like, I need to say, I need to say this stuff. So I need to like push, push through, but like my heart would be racing, you know? My first video is out there and you could tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still on my channel to this day. Um, I just looked so awkward and even my lighting was off. I didn't understand how to like set up my studio from where I film and everything. And I was just so nervous and just quiet and whatnot. But yeah, the more you put yourself out there, you become more comfortable in front of the camera. So yeah, mm. it's something that I've had to, to build my confidence in eventually over the years. I think I did leave makeup for a while um, and then I started working in a call centre and even though I was still doing events and still doing YouTube, I was hustling, I was like working like five days a week doing YouTube so as I got home I was like, listen, i got to get this work, honey. And um, um, I remember getting, um, 
<laughs> I remember, I, I remember getting an email uh, from L'Oreal being like, "We want you to be in a true match campaign because we love your self expression, we love your look." And at the time, I thought it was like a, a like a hoax, like someone was scamming me. I was like, "It was just scamming me." So I was bringing it <laughs> no way. Like, Hello, is this is is this is this right? And then I went to like meet them, and they were like, "We love you, you should tell We love like how you stand up for men in makeup and the whole vibe." And then I was like, "Oh my god!" But for the longest time, I was like, "Me doing this and just being myself and being on YouTube and." Sp- being like proud of my Menelin, being proud of being a black boy in makeup. This big company came to me and wanted me to be in this massive campaign that was going to be in TV and billboards with like other influencers and celebrities. It was just such a mind blowing experience to me. And that's when I just thought being yourself and being authentic to you on your platform will just open up so many doors. Even if it doesn't happen like in the first three months, in the first year, you are going to have your, everyone always has their moment. You are going to have your moment. So, from that point, I was just like, listen, being your, your authentic self always shines through. I definitely got to a place where I had to just start deciding to not let other people's opinions rule me. And I think every creator gets to that point where you have to start learning that, you know, you're you're still the creator of your own platform. You're still in charge of this um, and you should be doing stuff that makes you happy rather than trying to satisfy loads of other people's opinions which don't really matter um obviously whilst building an authentic community that appreciates you for who you are and in I can't remember the year it may have been like 2017 I definitely got like a lot of heavy press coverage and it was challenging because I didn't know how to handle it I was like 20 years old and I didn't know how to handle it but I started to realize that okay I can use my voice and my platform to put out the message that I want to be out there that inspires people and that shares my journey and my story, but I shouldn't let other people shape who I am. I'm I'm doing pretty okay. So I, I think that was one of the main moments that taught me, you know what, you have to, you have to really be confident in who you are and the path that you're walking in order to not get strayed or pushed over by the voices of so many people you've never met and will probably never meet you. So what obstacles have you faced in your specific industry that new creators are likely to come across and how do you overcome them? Um, I think a few obstacles, I think while doing it, I didn't face that many obstacles, but I do feel like, especially if you're a boy in beauty or a new creator coming, it because it's quite a female heavily dominated industry sometimes you may feel there are kind of kickbacks because the brand may not understand a male in beauty or sometimes even just being a black creator sometimes you feel that we're still not represented enough there still is enough shade yeah. there still isn't that exclusivity in the kind of um content event space so don't get discouraged like when you see like all these other creators maybe at an event or in a certain kind of space doing better than you as I said you will have your moment just keep being you just keep being authentic and just keep being proud of who you are because it's so easy to compare yourself or um fall down because this brand hasn't sent you PR or maybe you're, you're not getting a certain kind of views I just feel like keep doing you and everything will prevail I agree with you. Um, I think a lot of us who started a few years back, it's 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 about mm. it was about us just kind of just enjoying the whole process yeah. of creating, and that's what the platform is mm. for. Um, and I think at the very early stages as well, there was a there was quite a lot of community spirit. You know, a lot of beauty yes. YouTubers just getting to know each other. So we kind of just you know egged each other on. You know, whether it's behind the scenes yeah. or, or collaboration. It's exactly. Um, our, mm-hmm. uh, we was kind of in a, a small space, especially the black YouTube um, creators. Yeah. Um, a small space. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have some great friends that I've made over the years um, that we have similar stories that we can connect to. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I feel like, especially in this space, I'll say for new creators, definitely network, like find someone else on YouTube that you want to collaborate with. Don't be afraid to message people. Don't be afraid to like, yeah. just like get that first foot in first because more 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 times or less, they'll like reply back to you saying, hey, yeah, let's like meet up, let's collaborate because the more you network and the more people you know, you, it's just going to be better for you. So definitely just don't be afraid to make that first step. I would definitely say trying to find yourself as a creator whether that be your brand identity, the sort of content that you want to create and how you want to create it. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to be like 
other creators or trying to do what's popular and then lose your unique voice or your unique style and the thing about YouTube that's so great at times is that it's a celebration of uniqueness you know there are other issues but it's definitely a, a ability to create a platform around your unique identity and personality and that is your greatest asset don't ever lose that and I think I've oftentimes tried to make my voice sound like other people um when really and truly my voice is what's appreciated and what's needed so I would definitely say that would be my advice to new creators um, and creators in the beauty space or the academic space be yourself and show your authentic journey because people want to follow your story um that's actually really interesting and I fully agree YouTube obviously goes through different trends and different seasons and sometimes you just might get caught up in it um and you know you might just lose yourself for a second um but I think it's always important to kind of bring yourself back to a position where you're just being you because your your audience sometimes pick up on that um and it's just important to just remain you know steady um and not really try not to look at the numbers and you know the you know how many views you got etc of course it's probably important for a growth standpoint but at the same time if you can remain just in in your lane for the most part um it just Mm. keeps you at peace really yeah and I think it also it always reminds you to keep your authentic love for creating and I think that's what YouTube is like if you get too caught up with the numbers you forget about the community you forget about the the beauty of creating something that you're proud of and if that's not your main kind of foundation for what it is that you're doing YouTube's going to be really hard I think YouTube is a platform that can open so many doors and just create so many opportunities and I have had the ability to work with great brands but also great organizations like you said um I've had the chance to work on content for UN women I was able to contribute to write in um a poverty commission with the NUS here in the UK um as well as going to 10 Downing Street to talk about entrepreneurship for young people with Enterprise Nation there are so many opportunities that have presented themselves to try and help make a difference and raise awareness around issues and topics that I'm really genuinely passionate about and I think that Mm -hmm. those things have been those opportunities have been priceless for me um I've loved it and I look forward to doing more hopefully you mentioned previously that you had um you know some publications you'd worked on and you brought on other amazing black writers to contribute to um so have you got any other positive experiences in working on on you know a brand piece or an organization good experience I've had is I've been working with Channel 4 um, for um, making a documentary about hair that's going to be out at the end of this month and um, the whole team has been like from the director DOP makeup artists everybody has been has has been black and um, that's the first time I'd had an experience like that in television and um that was um that was that was that that was a really um maybe it's not the first time actually but it's a it's a very it's almost it's a it's a it's a rare thing it's not something that happens that happens often you know and so I think for the nature of the program that we're making um it was that 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 was necessary and it was brilliant that we had the opportunity to be able to 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 be able to do that so Gary you've worked with loads of brands um, is there any type of advice that you can give people on specifically working on like brand campaigns and brand deals? I think in this kind of industry, it's so hard because not a lot of people speak about brand partnerships and how they work and what really goes into it and like contracts and stuff. So luckily, um, around a certain time, I have got a lot of friends and we do the same thing. So it's always that kind of bounce of each other. But if you don't have that kind of network, I would definitely say try and reach out to someone who, like who you know or maybe like an agency or like a friend just because when you when you're dealing with like 
um, sponsorships always read the contracts like because contracts can be crazy and also if you are like getting new, um, kind of like new um, jobs coming in from brands definitely always make sure they're not I wouldn't say not not taking advantage of you because sometimes um, brands can feel that like um, they might be sending you something for gifting for a post definitely know your worth for what I would say know your worth and make sure when they're um, yeah. make, offering you um, your kind of role um deal read for the contracts thoroughly look at usage um just because sometimes i find that a lot of new creators these days don't look at the contracts, don't look at the fine print and then next thing you know um something they've done is being used for five years so definitely try and ask someone if you can try and ask like a family friend or whatever but also maybe dm your favorite creator or dm someone that you um know just to ask for advice because when i was st first starting off i was really scared too and then i actually did dm someone that i met a few times at an event and she actually did help me so much so definitely try and if you have someone around you try and ask them so finally, what would you say to people who are watching this, um, who, who want to do what you do? So I would say, if you're watching me right now, hey, I would say um, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely don't watch other people. Comparison is the devil. Definitely have your own niche, do your own thing, and just work hard and be consistent. For me, you can you can make content, but if you're not consistent, then you're not going to reap the rewards. Like definitely make sure. You're, I'm not saying you have to post every day and do a complete madness. If you have a schedule and people know that you're going to post Monday or Wednesday and then a Sunday, they'll be like, oh my god, you're going to post on Sunday. Let me get my popcorn and snacks and get ready for you. So definitely be consistent. Bring yeah. your personality forward. Bring some sauce. Um, just be you and you will reap the rewards like 100%. Just, you know, you don't worry yeah. about quality and don't worry about having a, a fancy camera. Phones these days can literally record in 4K, L literally just work with what you've got. And then once you reap the rewards, then you can level up. Find a purpose for your platform. I think a lot of people... Wow maybe wanting to start YouTube because it's like it's the it thing you know and you know they're seeing that influencers make money and I think there's there's no problem wanting to see it as a strategic career path but I think because of how much work it requires and how much of yourself it requires you to put into it find a deeper purpose and an aim for your content and for your channel that allows you to connect with people um, so that you enjoy this journey and also feel as though this is worthwhile and it gives you satisfaction to be creating or to be putting things out there more than just the aesthetics even if that's your main thing if your goal is to teach if your goal is to share if your goal is to inspire let that be the purpose underlying it all and, and remind yourself of that purpose often especially if you feel discouraged by numbers or analytics so yeah that's what I would say yeah, that sounds, that's actually sound advice, actually. Um, I kind of would say the same thing. It's really good to find what it is that you are meant to to do, you know, as opposed to just doing it because yeah. it's what's, you know, what everyone's doing. Um, I think people connect to it better when it's Definitely. just like your own niche or your own journey. And, you know, you reach out to an audience or a community that can relate to it. So... Somebody watching this who wants to do what I do, if they want to write books, say, they want to be an author, I think we are in a period in time where there are opportunities for black writers that there weren't, say, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, there have been a whole range of publications of black British writers in the last kind of three years that have done phenomenally well you know and I think with social media um, there is an opportunity to connect with literary agents and a literary agent is often like the first step in getting in getting a publishing deal and until recently it could be unless you were in you know the right kind of networks it could be extremely difficult to find a literary agent and this was um kind of a world that was closed off to many of us. But with the kind of advances in technology and social media, I think that is like a space where you can get an audience for your writing, you can connect with literary agents, and there are opportunities um, to access these spaces that we were for a long time kind of traditionally kept out of. So there's a lot that needs to be done still, 
but we are living in a time of greater opportunity than there was until very recently. So it's very, it's very exciting. Emma, it was so delightful to speak with you today. There's so much I, I'm, I've learned from you, but I definitely will be sliding in your DMs. Yeah, do it. Courtney, you're so inspiring. Take care, hon. Bye. Thank you so much, Chanel. This was like a dream come true. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Gary, you're so down to earth and chilled. Oh, thank you. It's so lovely to speak to you. You seem, you're so sweet. You're you're glowing from over. You look amazing. Beat to the gourd. And it was thank a pleasure you. talking to so you. So are you. Like, your personality, <laughs> your personality radiates to the screen. And it was just such an important and like obviously important thing to speak about. So it's amazing to speak about it with you. Take care. Bye. Bye, babe. Bye. Bye.